Hi, Mr. Romer here to help the percussion with a little bit of understanding the mallet keyboard and how to play it. I'm not talking technique today, I'm just talking about how to understand what's here in front of you. And we've already talked about the names of the notes and the names of these notes and how to tell where they are. Also on the staff reading in the treble clef. Uh, if you get into marimba, there's a bass clef as well, but it's the same principle. Once you find the first note, it's lines and spaces up and down. Right now, I want to talk about a scale and what the definition is of a major scale. It's something that may be a little bit new to you percussionists. Uh, woodwinds, brass, they use this all the time. The easiest scale is the one that I've got on the screen in front of you, which is the C major scale. That first note is that C. And then it steps up from there again. Space line, space line, space line, space line. But I want to learn the names of the notes. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and back down. The cool thing with the keyboard is you have a visual lesson right here that teaches you the pattern that is the major scale. Now, what do I mean pattern? Well, how many notes are there in an, in an octave? Well, how many did I just play? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Except those, those are both C, so there's really seven. But wait, there's not. There's these up here. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 notes before I start repeating. So how do I know which ones will make a good sounding major scale? Well, there's a pattern of skipping. I define on the keyboard any note to the next note with nothing in between as a half step and any note to the next with a skip as a whole step. And that could also go here. This is a half step. This is a whole step. Whole step. Half step. Half step. Whole step. You see how I skipped that one? Whole step. All right, these are called basic intervals and a scale is built out of halves and holes. I can take any note on the keyboard, I'm gonna start with C, and the pattern will go first note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Again, that's root, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If I memorize that pattern, I can actually play any scale on the mallets, even if I can't read the music or remember the sharps and the flats or anything, I can get myself into the key just visually using that uh, pattern of halves and holes. Let's start actually on a G now. Oh, I've got my cursor in the right place here. There we go, on the wrong way. There we go, let's go to this scale here, the G. And forget a minute trying to read it with that sharp sign that's out front and all of that. Let's just think about the pattern. Let's start on G and go root, whole, see I skipped one, whole, half, so far it's the exact same as the other, all on the lower keys or white keys. Root, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, but now I need another whole. So you can see that in order to do a scale starting on G, I have to grab this one key right there. And that holds my pattern, root, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So if I were to name the notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And that brings me to the rule, which is in every scale, you have to say the name of every note. G, A, B, C, D, E, I want to say F, but I need a whole step, F sharp, G. So it just so happens that if I start on a G, I need an F sharp. And sure enough, if I take a look at the scale itself, I'll see that there's one sharp in the key of G, and that sharp is on the line that's an F. And that makes that note right there an F sharp. So, the, the pattern continues on every other scale. Again, root, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that's going to make a major scale everywhere. And that pattern is what determines how many flats and how many sharps I have. Conversely, if I already know how many sharps and flats I have, 
I can work with some uh, with some patterns to go backwards and figure out what key I would be in. And we'll talk about that as we do each individual scale. But right now, that's your introduction to major scales. Hope it helped.